Good afternoon. Let's go to the book of Jeremiah, chapter 6. Let us all stand up, if you will, at chapter 6 as we read God's word from verse number 15 up to verse number 19. Jeremiah, chapter 6. As we read God's word, let's read it responsibly. We like to hear God's word being read in the churches of Amen. Jesus Christ. Were they ashamed when they had committed the abomination? Nay, they were not all ashamed, neither could they blush. Therefore, they shall fall among them that fall. At the time that I visit, them they shall be cast down, saith the Lord. Also I set watchmen over you, saying, Hearken to the sound of the trumpet. But I said, We will not hearken. All together. Hear, O earth, behold, bring evil upon these people, even the fruit of their thoughts, because they have not hearkened unto my words, nor to my law, but rejected it. Let's pray. Our gracious God and loving Father, we are so grateful for the opportunity we could read thy word, listen to thy word, preach thy word. Give us, O Lord, an attentive heart that we might understand thy word and let your will be done unto us. We ask all these things in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. Let's be seated. Good afternoon. <laughs> Jeremiah was called the weeping prophet. We need to understand why he was called the weeping prophet. Let's go out and try to understand the time period wherein Jeremiah uh, was in. In chapter 1, the words of Jeremiah, the son of Hilkiah, of the priests that were in Anathoth in the land of Benjamin, to whom the word of the Lord came in the days of Josiah, the son of Ammon, king of Judah, in the thirtieth year of his reign. It came also in the days of Jehoiakim, the son of Josiah, king of Judah, unto the end of the eleventh year of Zedekiah, the son of Josiah, king of Judah, unto the carrying away of Jerusalem captive in the fifth month. So this is the time period we're in for the last, actually, let's go prior to Josiah, there were two more kings, these seven last kings, among them, only Josiah walked in the Lord. Only Josiah obeyed God. But we understand also after a while, we, as we go to this, from Josiah unto Zedekiah, unto the, unto the carrying captive, Jeremiah was there. So try to understand when Jeremiah was giving the word of God, giving those messages to these people. The destruction of Israel was inevitable in those times. But here, Mr. Uh, Prophet Jeremiah trying to speak what God wants for them to understand and hear. And yet, they said, we will not hearken. From, from Manasseh, he was 12 years old when he reigned. This is in the book of 2 Chronicle chapter 33. He reigned 55 years. Evil. I'm talking about Southern Kingdom. Because in the Northern Kingdom, there was no king that follows God. In the Southern Kingdom, from Manasseh, 55 years reign. But thus, thus, to sum it up, it is evil reign. He was taken captives also in Babylon, but Manasseh repented. He was taken back, but you know, Yung Suma Total or the, the sum of his reign, evil. Amon, 22 years old when he reigned. And he reigned two years. That is, this is in the book of Second Chronicle chapter 33. Evil. Josiah, eight years old when he reigned. Now they met Jeremiah on his 30th reign. 
means to say he was 21 years old at that time. Josiah, when he was 16 years old, he seek the Lord. This is a good thing about this man. And you, I want you to understand, from Judges chapter 2, there was no, what do you call this? Uh, wala po yung tinatawag na Passover. It was stopped in, Joshua, in Judges chapter 2. Until Josiah. Do you, can you imagine how many hundred of years is that? Josiah kept the Passover in his reign. This, you can find this in chapter, uh, in chapter 35 of 2 Chronicles. This is what they call the glorious reign of Josiah. And he reigned 31 years. But you know, the sad part is this. He's 31 year reign, uh, 8 years old, so 39 lang siya. 39 years old, and he died. You know why he died? He fight a wrong warfare. And that will be another another message to you for you to to study so jeremiah lament for the de for the death of josiah in second chronicles chapter 35 verse number 25 he cried and then here comes jehoahaz 23 years old he only reigned 3 months jehoiakim which is also called eliakim he was 25 years old and he reigned 11 years Evil rule. That is in Second Chronicles chapter 36. Nebuchadnezzar bound him and get the vessels in the temple. That is in Second Chronicles chapter 36, verse number 6 and 7. And then here is Jehoiakim, 8 years old. He reigned 3 months, 10 days. Evil rule. Of course, 8 years old, how can they reign? They were just puppet. And then the last is Sedekiah. 21 years old. He reigned 11 years. Evil rule. Second Chronicles chapter 36, verse 11 to 19. This is the time where Nebuchadnezzar burned Jerusalem, looted everything from the temple. This is the period or this is the time period wherein Jeremiah was the prophet of God. Just imagine it. Why he was called the weeping prophet? He is weeping for Israel. He is weeping that the inevitable things will happen to Israel. No turning back. Wala na, you cannot turn it around. Because, tingnan natin. I just want to understand. Let's go, to, let's go back to Isaiah chapter, uh, Jeremiah chapter 1. In verse number 18, it says here, For behold, I made thee this day a defense city and an iron pillar. He's talking about Jeremiah. A brazen walls against the whole land, against the kings of Judah. Against the princes thereof, against the priests thereof, against the people of the land. And they shall fight against thee, but they shall not prevail against thee. For I am with thee, saith the Lord, to deliver thee. He will come to these people wherein all, everybody was against him. You know, it's very hard. At this time that Jeremiah is standing and everybody is against him. But don't worry, God will fight for you. In chapter 2, verse 5, I want you to understand the, who are the Israelites in those period of time. Thus saith the Lord, chapter 2, verse 5, What iniquity have your fathers found in me that they are gone far from me and walk after vanity and are become vain? They are gone far from me. In, in chapter 2, verse 6, Neither said they, Where is the Lord that brought us up out of the land of Egypt that led us through the wilderness, through the land of deserts and pits, through the land of drought and of shadow of death, through a land that no man passed through, where no man dwelt. Nobody is seeking God. Even the priest, verse number 8, the priest said not, where is the Lord? Do you understand that we should not stop seeking God? But even the people, of course, how, what, what, what do you expect? The priest is not seeking God. What do you think about the people? They will not seek God either. In chapter 3, verse number 14, just want you to understand these people. Turn, O backsliding children, saith the Lord, for I am married unto you, 
and I will take you one of a city and two of a family and I will bring you to Zion. This is prophetic. But God wants them to be back. They are backslidden children. In verse number 22, return ye backsliding children. Chapter 4. If thou wilt return, O Israel, saith the Lord, return unto me. If thou wilt put away thine abomination out of my sight, then shall thou not remove. Chapter 4, verse 1. They will not be removed. Nebuchadnezzar. God can stop that man. But of course, we understand also that they were removed from that land. In chapter 4, verse number 22. For my people is foolish. They have not known me. They are sottish children. And they have none understanding. They are wise to do evil, but to do good, they have no knowledge. Foolish people. Chapter 6. Verse number 8. And by the way, in chapter 5, God allows him to run ye to and fro through the streets of Jerusalem. And see now and know and seek in the broad places thereof if you can find a man. If there be any the executed judgment that seeketh the truth, and I will pardon it. Do you think Jeremiah find, found one? No. That's a sad thing. Let's go to chapter 6, verse number 8. Be thou instructed, O Jerusalem, lest my soul depart from thee, lest I make thee desolate, a land not inhabited. By the way, before God let them in, it's, it's nothing. And by the, do you understand that prior to the return of the Israel in the early times, in the, in the 1900, that is a desolate place. Israel, without Israel people, is a desolate place. And I will make that place desolate. But if Israel follows God, and, in, and they were in that land, it will be the land that flows with milk and honey. But if God removed those people from that land, whoever will come, it will be desolate. It's nothing. By the way, up before World War II, it's nothing. It's a desolate place. But look what happens now when Israel is coming back to, to their land. It's becoming very I mean, progressive, fruitful. Even flowers were being <laughs> grown in the desert. <laughs> Be thou instructed. In verse number 10, To whom shall I speak and give warning that they may hear? Behold, their ear is uncircumcised, and they cannot hearken. Behold, the word of the Lord is unto them a reproach. They have no delight in it. You know those people that come this morning, they said we like to hear God's word. Why? It's all parang palabas, sarswela even in the churches. They, will, they like to entertain people. And do you understand now that even in our time, when you call about the word conservative Baptist, no, they are, most of them are liberals. When you talk about the fundamental Baptist, they don't even believe that we have a written word of God. How do you think that people call fundamental Baptist? And then, they, are where, they were the group now in the Philippines that they call themselves reform. Baptist, when was the time that you reformed the Baptist? <laughs> and then here comes the progressive Baptist. Be careful with that word, progressive. Not no. In their spirituality, they are declining. When you talk about the preachers, watch them in the television. They are more of a motivational speakers. They are more of a inspiring. And I will, I, I am call, I call them professional preachers. It's good to hear, 
but never hear the true word of God. In chapter 6, verse 10, they have no delight. Why? Let's see in chapter 6 also, verse number 13. For, the, for, for, for from the least of them, even unto the greatest of them, everyone is given to covetousness. And from the prophet, even unto the priest, everyone dealeth falsely. Everyone dealeth falsely. You know how, how, how this pulpit was being used to fool people? Not only in the Philippines, around the world. They are dealing falsely from the greatest to the least of men. And then, and you, what is the common ground? Covetousness. You know, we, we never stop to have more. We never. Solomon said that in the book of Ecclesiastes, our heart will never be full from those material things in this world. Never. Let's go to our text today. Were they ashamed when they had committed abomination? Sad to say, even you hear stories upon stories of preachers. Just, do lang sa amin eh, in, in Batambong. We have a former student, he divorced his, his wife, married another one. And then when we meet, he's always talking about the ministry, the work of God, the church. Are you not ashamed of what you are doing? You are committing adultery. But they are not ashamed. Where they were commit when they do com uh, were they ashamed? Nay, they were not all ashamed. Neither could they blush. And I found out in, in, in Cambodia, when, we, you, when you found somebody doing something wrong, they never get blush. Never. Oh, ano ngayon na huli mo ako? <laughs> Titignan ka pa at sasabihin sa isip-isip, o oh, ano ngayon na huli mo ako? Ang gagawin mo? They never get blush. At least, meron pang pasintabi ang mga Pinoy. May konting hiya. Pag nahuli. Talagang, talagang may ano pa. May, may konti pa. Pero yung iba talaga walang hiya talaga. Everybody knows what that person is doing. And yet, no. Nobody even speak to, to that person in blunt word. No. They were not all ashamed. Therefore, they shall fall among them that fall. At the time that I visit them, they shall be cast down, saith the Lord. Do you think those people will stay? Let me tell you this. The story was not yet finished. Their history was not yet over. Let's see the end thereof. Of what they are doing. Thus saith the Lord, Stand ye in the ways, and see and ask for the old paths. Our lesson for today is about stand in the old paths. Why is it that even Jeremiah in his time, they understand what is the word old paths? Because the way of God, the word of God, the instruction of God, that is the old path. And they understand it fully, what is that old path? But as I said, when, uh, when, when Jeremiah tried to speak to them, will they hear? No. Will they follow? No. Nobody obeys. And yet, he was in that time period wherein nobody will listen to him. The question now is this. Will you stand? 
where from the greatest to the lowest of the people, they will be against you. The question is, will you stand? I, I've just received, yes, is that yesterday, a voting poll in the government, Philippine government, have you received some also? About the voting of the same-sex marriage. Because I opened the site, I just vote no. But daming boto ng yes eh. Daming boto ng yes. They like to have a same-sex marriage in the Philippines. But because they sent me that, that post, I voted no. I don't know where is that boat goes to. I don't know. But thinking about even posting something in the Facebook, do you understand when you speak or when you stand in the truth, everybody will just be like crazy. Pa, 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 pa. Lo and behold, your Facebook. <laughs> A lot of bad comments. That is the time of Jeremiah. From the greatest to the lowest, everybody is against you. But God says, I will be with you. Trying to think about standing in that old paths, how many Baptists now truly stand in faith? Pastor Joel been to Philippines me, me for two years. I've been going to and fro. It is sad to say that most of them, when they, are, when they come and fellowshipping together, no, they are not talking about truths. They are not talking about scriptures. They are not talking. They are talking about their gadgets. They are talking about how beautiful their church. They are talking about how much offering that they have. They are talking about how many people that they have in the church. That is a sad thing now. Nobody even speaks or nobody, nobody fellowship in the coffee table, drinking coffee or whatsoever, and then they're talking about God's word. Talking about God's word, just the purity of God's word. Nobody now. That is the sad reality. But when this message was given to Jeremiah, stand ye, stand. First, stand and love the ways of God. As I said, not many people stand now, especially in the truth. The ways of God is the ways of God. Whatever situation, whatever circumstances, whatever scenario or time period, the ways of, the ways of God is the same. It never changes throughout time. You know, there are many, many, many times people in our friends in Facebook, they're just posting quotations. You know, most of the quotations that they are trying to post mostly are humanistic philosophy. And you understand and you know that that is humanistic philosophy. You know, when, when they encourage other people, kaya mo yan, humawa ka lang sa Panginoon. And then I made the comment, hindi mo kaya, hayaan mong ang Diyos ang humawak sa'yo. Amen. And then I put the verse. I, I have to put verse. Why? Why? When, when in the word that you, you think you can hold unto God? Huh? But they, they are trying to encourage another person and they say, hold on to God. Where is that verse? Hold on to God. I know of a verse that says, God holds you. And then, you can make comments. You cannot hold on to, on, you cannot hold on to God. Let God hold upon you. That's simple. And they put the verse. That's it. That is correcting something that is in their mindset, thinking that it is them. Still, the, the center is human. Human. That is not the ways of God. You, you have to understand and remember God's way, man's way is not God's way. It's very different. It's very opposite. When you stand and love the ways of God and by the way, just like Jeremiah, be ready. 
that people will fight <laughs> you. Just be ready. I'm, I'm, I'm saying Jeremiah was already given that, that part that everybody will be against you. But I will be with you. I will fight. God says. Secondly, the verse says, see and ask for the old paths. We have to continually seek and look to the ways of God. We never stop learning. We don't have the monopoly of truth. You know, when you come to Bible college, when you, even before you start, you think you know the Bible. After first year, you, know, you think like, well, I know. I know a lot. <laughs> On the second year, it seems like, oh, it's, why the thing that I know before is wrong? Now I'm learning. When you finish third year, then you think like, why is it that I almost not understand anything and everything that I learned. And when you graduated fourth year, you said, how can I start to learn God's word? <laughs> and then when you are pastoring, one guy asked me, oh, pastor, I've been pastoring for one year now. I don't know what message will I give to the people. And then I asked him, are you reading God's word? And then he said, yes. And then the second question I asked him is this. Do you study God's word? Or, this is the problem with early, uh, you know, the first time, the preachers, we try to copy many sermons after sermon. When you listen to one pastor, he preached very nice outline, you just copy it. And you know that that pastor will not come to your church and preach that same message. So you, <laughs> so you will try to preach that, that message, you know. And then, lo and behold, uh, Sunday is coming again. And then, what you will do is this. You try to search, 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 and then you're trying to find the message, and then it's 12 o'clock in the late at night, and then you still, the message is not yet coming. <laughs> We've experienced all of that. <laughs> We've experienced that, you know. And then, lo and behold, now, 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 you can open the internet, and then, boom. Boila, oh, I have a good outline, sermon outline, ready, just like a uh, can, can goods, ready to serve. <laughs> you know, I, <laughs> this is the good thing in my part. The first time when I become a pastor in, of the church, there were so many Bible students in the church. Secondly, there were so many graduates of Bible school in that church. So, what will I do? They will know if I copy the lesson. They know if that message comes from, from the book, from the internet, or oh, no internet in those times, <laughs> from the book or from the book. So I have to force myself to study God's word. I mean, force myself. Why? I am ashamed if I will preach God's word and these people, Bible students, graduate of Bible school, will know, oh, I know that outline. I have read that. Oh, I've listened to that. Oh, I know that. You understand me? That is why in my early time of ministry, I have to, I have to study, I have to make my own food. You understand that? Make your own food. You don't feed them the same thing over and over again. Lagi mo ng konting kolorete. Lagi mo ng konting kakaibang presentasyon. But it is the same truth. Talking about it, seek and look to the ways of God. We never stop seeking. We never stop looking. If some people, you, you think you are wrong, then praise the Lord. I know. 
You nobody, nobody. Why? Some people ask this question. Why is it that just now that I know that truth, I've wasted my... No, by the way, when you find that truth, nobody is ahead or late. It so happened God revealed that truth in this period of time. And be thankful for that truth that you have. It, it is not, why is it that it was not given to us? Why, why, why my pastor before, why those preachers before? What? No, don't. Thank God, God revealed it to you now. As we continually seek, and by the way, I forgot this verse. Let's go back for a moment. Chapter 3, verse 14. Chapter 3, verse 14. And then I will read 14 and 15. Turn, O backsliding children. I will read the verse 15. And I will give you pastors according to my heart, which shall feed you with knowledge and understanding. You know this verse? I pre I, 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 I've heard about many preaching about this verse. But do you understand? Prior to this verse, there is verse number 14. How can God give us a pastor according to God's heart if the people themselves are backsliding? No, check it. Turn from your backsliding, you. And then God will give us the right pastor. But no, the very reason why many Pastors, they are not preaching God's word anymore. Because even the people themselves are backsliders. And then they are trying to ask God's pastor that will feed them spiritually, that will make their heart to seek and look for, God, for the ways of God. No! Because even those pastors never seek and look for the ways of God. No more. Okay, tuloy na lang natin to hanggang dumating ang Panginoon. Masaya na tayo rito. Huwag na natin baguhin. Kumikitang kabuhayan to eh. <laughs> Ba't natin ba baguhin? No. Sayang din yun ah. <laughs> There were so many things that they are doing now that you understand, yung kaninang binasa natin, covetousness. Covetousness. And I will give you pastors according to mine heart, which shall feed you with knowledge and understanding. By the way, if the people of God in the church are truly repentant and they get out from their backsliding state, let me tell you this is straight. How God will work to your pastor and how God will give you knowledge that will be given to your pastors. Why? Because everybody have the right heart. But the backsliding members, oh, it's hard. And we are asking for God to give us more uh, spiritual understanding in heavenly places. No. Let's change first. Seek and look to the ways of God. Let's continue in that verse, in verse number 16. And then, where is the good way? When you find it, then the verse says, and walk therein. Thirdly, step in and live in the ways of God. We, you know, in, I always say this. The church of Jesus Christ will continue until Christ comes. Amen. This is, we, we, we believe in the per perpetuity of the church. From the time that it was started in Jerusalem until he comes again, there will be the church of Jesus Christ. And then in Timothy 3.15, it says, the pillar and ground of truth. You can never, never find the truth but in the church of Jesus Christ no other place 
you can find that truth but in the church of Jesus Christ the pillar and ground of truth is the church of God so when you think about that that church continue the question where just like you're asking where is that way where I got I, I become a believer doing sa university of course the first church that I attended those uh, people that give me the gospel that dis disciple me in school uh, dun, dun lang din ako sasama how, how do I know siyempre sasama lang din ako doon but as I read God's word and I listen to them for like six months I begin to question especially in the, our Sunday school I begin to question them question after question after question in the church Sunday school Lo and behold, every time they answer, they cannot even open the scripture. And in my heart, I said, but ganito? Nagtatanong ako, I'm asking question. They have an answer, but they cannot open directly from God's word. In that time, I said to God, Lord, I know you have a church. I know. But who, what, I don't know. I have no idea. I'm a believer. I know 100% I'm sure I am a believer. But, you know, when I witnessed to my nephew, he is the son of my cousin. So, I witnessed to him and then he became a believer. And I tried to find a church in the area where he lives. <laughs> I don't have anything but, oh, there's a Baptist church there. <laughs> And the pastor is Pastor Mark, Cecilio Mariano. There's a Baptist church there. And then when I went to that church, I found out some of my friends in university, Christian. And they are attending that church. And I said to them, why you did not tell me you are here in this church? But because I, I have a, a convert, my nephew, I have to put him in the church. But I'm still looking for a church. I don't know where, 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 where. But when I bring him in that church, of course, I attended in that church and I found those uh, friends from that, from university, they are also attending, three, four of them. So, lo and behold, the pastor, he is an old man, but I was not yet baptized. So I, I come forward for baptism and I asked him, Pastor, what is your requirements? For me to be baptized. And he just asked me plainly, he said, Are you saved? Yes. And then I give the verse. And then he asked me another question to assure me if he truly I am saved. Yeah. And no doubt, he said, oh, You are saved. Next week, you bring your clothes and then I will baptize you. Or you just uh, change clothes. You don't have now. So bring uh, another clothes next week and we will go to Santa Mesa for the baptism. Is that all, Pastor? Yeah, what do you like to? Because in the other church that I'm attending, I asked that question. Why you don't want to baptize me? And they said, no, 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 no. We, we have to be careful with our membership here. We need to this, this, do, 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 many things. But I'm not yet baptized. I want to be baptized, but they don't want me to be baptized. And I give that verse in Acts chapter 8, and I say, oh, look, this, this man, the new look. They found the water. See, there's there anything that will hinder me to be baptized? If thou believest, believest, thou mayest. And then the two of them went to that water and then he baptized him. Why you cannot do that to me? And then, and, uh, you know, da, 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 and so many things, you know. But no, 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 nothing from the word of God. So, that is the reason why I get out from that church. They don't want me to be baptized. Praise God. <laughs> God led me. Why? Because I am seeking that way. Where? Where? What church? Who? I don't know. But God led me to that church. And lo and behold, I learned so many things with my pastor. Seek and look to the ways of God. Step in and lead in the ways of God.
This is the hardest thing. Once we understand it, once we seek for it, and we found it, the hardest part is to live into that ways that you have heard, that you have learned, that you have found. Because when you step in and live to that ways of God, be ready. Because everybody will be against you. But let me tell you this. As we, as we go with that verse of Jeremiah, God says, I will be with you. Just live with what you have heard. You know what, what Apostle Paul says? Which I have delivered unto you. That is why I have one question with that guy that says, who, who are we to change what God delivered to the churches of Jesus Christ? There is nothing new here. You think, oh, that is new. No, there is nothing new here. If this is the church of Christ, and everything will be found right from the beginning of the church of Jesus Christ. There is no new truth. No. That is why we have to go back to that old paths. As God said to Jer Jer Jeremiah, stand in that old paths. And you know when you do that, what is the rest of that verse says? You shall find rest for your souls. But the people says, but they said, we will not walk therein. But to those people that will walk therein, the verse says, you shall find rest for your souls. Do you know that rest is not only rest in peace? <laughs> no. That is the final rest. Okay? The rest that was mentioned here is something satisfaction for your soul. Do you know when you are not yet in the truth? By the way, there is always a struggle. But when you find the truth, you walk into the truth, you stand in the truth, Parang ano na, di ba? Yung parang free-flowing. Parang banayad na, wow. Why? Because you understand fully. Praise God. We can still stand in that old paths. And the rest of our souls. We are satisfied. Amen? Amen. And you know, when you are into that truth, give it all. Tayuan mo na, tindigan mo na, lakaran mo na. And you will never be wrong. And everything, I'm, I'm not saying that everything will be fine. No. Because Jeremiah said, they will be against you. But thank God, the rest of our souls, you know, nobody can give but God. Praise God.